when I thought there was a God when the Chicago Cubs won last week. Uh, other, other events show the unpredictability of life and, and what's happening every day to us today, yesterday. And uh, the poetry, at least, is a sort of a sanctuary you can come back to and can enrich, enrich all our lives. Uh, I met Max because I met Harry through a human rights organization we both were supporting, and I had a long lunch with Max. We knew about everything, including the Cubs. And, and uh, he then, as a, I'm a director of the Academy of American Poets, he, he took an internship, thanks to Jennifer, in the, in the uh, Academy. And uh, everything went up since then, and unfortunately, we, 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 we lost him. A great star that was too, too soon extinguished. Uh, but I, I think I must say something about he, him and his relationship to Harry who I met, because I work in the field of trust in the state, so I deal with death uh, more than most people ever do. Uh, and it's a dubious distinction, uh, but, it, but I, I, mean, I constantly see parents having to adjust to the loss of the child. Now, you know, there are, there are, in most cultures, there's a word for a parent whose child died before them. In China, in East, for example, there's a word shidu. In Sanskrit, there's a word vilama. In Hebrew, there's a word based on soko. Uh, but there's no word in the English language for a parent who dies, whose child dies before them. There's orphan, widow, widower, but it was thought by many to be such a horrible thing, perhaps the worst thing that can happen to you, that they're, they're, they, they, they purposefully, whoever they are, create our language. Uh, have no word for a parent whose child but dies before them. And of course, it's a, it's a terrible, terrible thing, and it takes a terribly worse sh shape. I, if there were a Hall of Fame of mothers who, who, who and children who show how the <coughs> parental relationship should be, it's Ari and our brilliant Max. They're both brilliant. Uh, uh, Max said he got his imagination <coughs> from, from his mother, which is quite a compliment. Uh, so so I, I think we should all know that the loss that often seems unbearable, since uh, your heart, so some say, can only be broken in direct proportion to the intensity of the love you have experienced and have lost. Having experienced a great love and losing it is uh, unbearable. And, the grief that Ari has, I, I've, I've never demonstrated, and I've never seen demonstrated a greater love and respect for a child, nice. and vice versa, the mother and the child. So with that in mind, I, I want to read one of uh, Max's poems that doesn't quite deal with that subject directly, but it has a spirit about it that shows the incredible love between the mother and her son. It's called the vacuum plant of the PP priestess. Not an exactly eloquent title, but a very interesting poem. Every day a chicken dies so that my mom may live. Their corpses are tied, her teeth beheaded cliffs, her gums the rubber blades of heaven. Deeper in her vagrants made of shadow pack the city of her body. I'm a little bum in there who says I'm alone instead of other people. Panic is a complicated city fed exclusively on chicken. Turn on the fan. Steaming chicken spins it. Flip the light and a geyser of neck blood will force open your pupils. All my shadowy friends are memories from her brain. I am solid and pink and come from the egg in her stomach. I was lonely for a pink person who doesn't think exactly like my mom. So I headed north to the place where her brain moans chilly and low, like lightning that wants to stay. I hear my own voice in the morning, my own voice from the world beyond. Thank you.